All right, I'm Jason. I'm here with Richard to talk about, yes, MACD1, but also the evolution of Special Forces boots. You, you know a lot more than I do about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, 30 years uh, in special operations goes even further beyond what, we're, what we've got on the table here. And all of the boots that I've tried, everything that I've tried to do to, to make my feet function because as a special forces soldier, you live in your, your boots. Uh, I've tried everything from Chippewas to, uh, and they're, they're loaded everything. with mink oil, just every, everything you can possibly think of. And the boots have evolved over the years. The, the boots I had in Vietnam weren't bad boots. They weren't the best, but they're kind of what we used uh, at that time for selection. Uh, I think Jason used his for selection later on. Uh, a version of that boot, uh, slightly modified with a different sole, but then that's what became the, the standard or the starting point for the, the new boots that Go Ruck has come up with, the Mac V1s. Yeah, so we took these sort of Vietnam era boots, mm -hmm. right? The, at least the, the uppers, so right. the leather with the, the, the nylon kind of, you know, ankle, the classic jungle boot look. And I think your soles would have been different back. They would have. We had what they called a Panama sole, which was a, a bigger lug that, that allowed mud to come out. The initial ones had very tight lugs, and you just, you'd end up with five pounds of mud on each foot. So we, they, they modified them to come up with this Panama sole that had the larger lugs that let mud come out of them much easier. And so that's what we used in Vietnam to start with. And then Vibram started coming up with some really great soles that, that guys started going to. Yeah, so when I went through, when I went through the course in, gosh, it seems like forever now, 2004. Oh, come so, on, 67, okay? <laughs> 2004. So what we had done, I mean, th this, was, this was before the, the desert brown boots became mm -hmm. uniform friendly. So right. I was kind of, when the ACUs, the worst camouflage right. pattern in history came out, I was, yeah. They ruined so many cool war pictures by forcing guys to wear ACUs. That's maybe a different story. Yeah. But the, the, the deserts were, the, the tan boots were, were uniform issued. When I first went through, it was with BDUs, the mm -hmm. Vietnam pattern. Yeah. Woodland the, pattern. Woodland pattern. And right. So we had black boots, the, the, the Vietnam era inspired jungle boots. But what everybody wanted to do was to make them lighter mm -hmm. because that's just, Every step you take at the end of however many miles, it's, it's not it, fun. It's an accumulative effect that, that, that at the end of a long march, 50 miles, 100 miles, whatever it might be, no matter how fast you're going, it, it gets worse and worse with each step. Yeah. So what, what we did is we went to Clark's boot shop right mm -hmm. on Yadkin, and they basically removed the old soles that mm -hmm. came standard with, right. with the boots and put on a more, a more athletic style, right. style bottom, removed the shank, mm -hmm. steel shank or what a fiberglass right. shank that was yeah. in the boot. And some guys would have the, the toe caps and the, and the heel cups removed as well. Um, I did that on a pair, but what happened was, is when, when we removed the, the toe cap, if you punch something, a, a, a knot on, on a tree, log. a branch, a log, whatever, yeah. all of a sudden your big toe ends up being two or three times bigger than you want. Yeah. And that's no fun. And then when you remove the, the, the heel cup, what I found happens on uneven terrain, mm -hmm. it just, you start, it, it shifts too much. There's yeah. not enough stability. So you, you lose structural integrity yes. in the boot and, and therefore your, your foot is no longer supported properly. Right. Yeah. So these, these turned into, I mean, there's no more soul left on these. I mean, these are, you know, there's a lot, a lot of miles that, that I put on these and everybody basically wore, wore these and mm -hmm. we had options, you know, we, we could go get black boots, whatever we sort of wanted yeah. to do and you're always looking for that edge. So these ended up being, feeling a lot lighter than the standard issue ones. Mm -hmm. And so we felt like we were just, you know, getting away with something, right? It's like, <laughs> man, old timers, they had to wear these two pound boots and yeah. these, you know, this is what, pound and a half or something. I mean, mm -hmm. these are big, yeah. but pound and a half each, that's, that's a lot better than two and some change, which we yeah. get into, you know, eventually the, these became the, the desert yeah. ones that got issued to me. Those things, I mean, those just, I mean, I, they're, they're still, yeah. they, they came out of the box. Just for this, this show, they came out of the box, right? I, they, they got all the use that they deserved. And nobody ever wanted to wear those. The people that had to wear them would, you know, mm -hmm. in, in 
basic ba in, in the normal military units or the big or, army. The big army. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. And so at some point, you know, there was this this shift in special forces to, to just lighter weight sneaker style. An athletic type shoe built on the athletic standards so that you could move faster and, and more conveniently and right. comfortably. And comfortably. Yeah. And so these were the ones that got issued to everyone. You know, Oakley got the contract and I'm sure yeah. good, good for them. Um, I didn't really, I didn't wear these in when I was deployed. They, I mean, I, I ended up wearing a pair of Merrells. It was sort of the same problem though. They were both, they're supposed to be for hot weather stuff. They were, they were just too, there's too much to them. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot of padding. It sounds nice, right? Yeah. It sounds, oh, look, the, the, the squish test. Oh, these are gonna be really comfortable. The problem that I, I ended up using these for, for garrison stuff. Um, but the problem is, is when they look at anything like rain or a puddle or, you know, a sewage in the middle of downtown Baghdad or Basra or whatever, they just get heavy, they, they absorb all of that stuff and they, they and start to stink. And they never dry out. They never dry out. And so, but the, the lightweight element was, was definitely mm -hmm. much appreciated. The one thing that I noticed on these was uh, the, the extra padding that's in there that makes them feel nice on the squish test also gets hot. Very hot. And so then, then your foot starts to create sweat, mm -hmm. which is, oh look, water. <laughs> and they, then they collect, they get wet, then they collect mud, and then that's uh, down, downhill yeah. from there. So these were pretty yeah. good for me when I was at Fort Carson. You know, temperatures yeah. a little bit cooler, and I only yeah. wore them in garrison. Oh, that'd be great. So, yeah, so they, they were great like that. Good boots to go to the PX in. Yeah, you can walk around, <laughs> except, you know, when I first showed up, the, the sergeant major who was there, he goes, hey, check it out. Never wear your uniform on post. <laughs> right? If you leave the special forces compound, because if you went to battalion, yeah. they made you put a uniform on, yeah. you know, yeah. I get it, discipline and all that stuff. Yeah. But he goes, never go into the big, yeah. the, the rest of base in uniform yeah. because he's, he's like, I'm just sick of getting calls from other sergeant majors <laughs> about, you know, this is messed up and that's messed up. So just don't you're, do you're it. You're scumbag but. troops. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Weirdos hanging off on the I've, edge. I've of had it. plenty of those calls. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's a sort of the, the brief overview is, you know, the boots got, there's, there's been an evolution of mm -hmm. boots, you know, the Vietnam era jungle boots are the classic ones. And, you know, the performance associated with those is lots of miles, they drain, they're, they're just mm -hmm. the basics, keep right. it simple, stupid, and they just work. They Good work in it. hot and wet weather. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you can always put more socks on. You can yeah. always, I mean, there's things that you can do. Yeah. But it's, it's impossible to get the water out fast enough in, in something like this. It's yeah. just, it's not possible. Yeah. And so we, when, when we were going for the inspiration, what should Go Ruck footwear look like? I mean, mm -hmm. the, this wealth of knowledge that we have, and when I say we, I mean the regiment of guys mm -hmm. that, you know, because whatever recommendations you got, you got from the generation before sure, you. Sure, absolutely. Passed, everything keeps passing down. Everybody passed everything, all the, all the, the tribal knowledge was passed down. Yeah. yeah. So we sort of took all of these, these, these litany of, of boots and functionality that we've put these things to the test w mm -hmm. with over the, the years and decades. And the, the, as you said, the foundational inspiration became these Vietnam era jungle boots, even more so modified to be more athletic and as lightweight as mm -hmm. possible. We were yeah. religious about making sure that these were gonna be as lightweight as possible. So, you know, I would say we, we took the best of the Vietnam era jungle boots with the push toward the athletic Athlete. special forces yeah. sneaker. And you say, hey, this is, this is what you got. And yeah. for me, it's about a lot more than just a, a boot because it's, it's taken your story and the sort of through line of special forces and the way that you know, knowledge passes from mm -hmm. generations to generation. And you just always try to sharpen, yeah. sharpen the, the tip of the spear, right? And Absolutely. That, that was the goal. And, I'm proud of how that I, turned out. I think we hit it. <laughs> yeah, I do On too. the mark. Yeah, and you shine them up all nice. You can drink in them too with your Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can go out and, and beat bushes with them all day, go back, shine them up real quick, and you're ready for a night on the town, no matter where you are. Yeah, so some of the features that we, that we did not do is we did not raise them up too high. Right. You know, you don't need that or want that. It's, yeah. you know. I was chatting with Dan last week, telling him about it, and he goes, you know, AR670-1, you know, SF guys, we don't care about that stuff. We just want the best thing for the Functionality. job. Functionality. Right, so yeah. creating 
army compliant boots. That was not our, that, that was not on our radar. We wanted goal. something that, you know, you can travel in them, you can train in them, you can ruck in them, you can, yeah. you know, find your favorite watering hole in them and look cool doing it. And so yeah. the light, I mean, every time I've, I've tossed these to someone, they're just shocked at how light they how are. Light they are. I mean, they're the lightest yeah. boot on the table by a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, we took the, the drain holes so that, you know, every step you can get rid expel get rid of water. the water. There's nothing to absorb water right. in them. So, you know, a lot of places when, when you weigh them, you say, oh, okay, these, these the, I mean, the Oakleys weigh more by, you know, a quarter of a pound or something mm -hmm. than, than, than ours. But the, the weight difference when they get wet, it's gonna oh, be a ton more. Ton more, so absolutely. Those are the types of functionality things that, yeah. that we looked at. You know, it's, yeah. it's the performance functionality of, hey, it might rain, yeah. hey, you might step in a creek. Yeah. Hey, you know, that, the, the, the gutter, yeah. you know, oops, my, yeah. My, yeah. So no it had to be deal. able to expel water, do all mm -hmm. of that kind of stuff. So there was just sort of a, it all kind of led, led to this and I think it took between you and me and Paul, it took mm -hmm. all of our various careers, all of that time to come together at one time and take all of this and simplify it down to that. To bring all the best pieces from each era and put it into these boots. And that's, I'm, I'm amazed that, that they turned out the way they did. I, I was a little skeptical, because I'd been through lots of boots, and I, I mentioned it earlier, uh, and it took, at times it took two to three weeks to really break in a pair of boots and a whole can of mink oil or whatever I was using at the particular time. These things, these things are ready to go right out of the box. And that's just amazing. Yeah, there's, uh, no, there's no break in time. Yeah, I mean, that's there just, isn't. It's that's, that, so we were chatting, it's, it's this suede leather that they put mm -hmm. in, the, in the heel counter. Yeah. And it's because that's the spot. That, yeah. that was always the spot, the back of your heel where always. You, know, you would rub right here. Yep. And, Yep. I mean, once that starts, then you, you, you got to get in these super advanced foot care classes, you know, because pain is very powerful yeah. motivator. So you, oh, learn, yeah. you yeah. learn how to take care yeah. of it. But, you know, the, the mole skin and the, you know, the, the uh, neosporin or the whatever you've Everything. got. Everything. It's yeah. just a nightmare, yep. you know? And so we said, hey, if we can avoid that, let's do that. And that's, I, I kept waiting for that to happen as we were trying these boots out. I really was. Mm -hmm. I figured it's got to happen. Boots are boots for our boots. Uh, they're going to eat my foot sometime. Hasn't happened yet. It really hasn't. Yeah. And I'm just amazed at that. The, the places we've taken this with, with no break-in period virtually and put them to the test and they worked. Yeah, you know, the no northern hot spots. Vietnam, which, yeah. Rich, you, you, you did some reconnaissance and found out we may have actually been in China. Yeah, I, I think we may have been in China a couple of points. I think we drank a beer in China, but that's okay. That, that, that beer's good everywhere. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, the, yeah, the size of laces really, really kind of surprised me. Because if you look at, well, these, these aren't, these are, these are kind of like that. But if you look at the Oakleys and, and some of the regular uh, Vietnam jungle boots, they're using, I've, Paul mentioned it, I, and I'm not, a, I'm not a shoe dog, he is. Uh, the, the laces on those are like five millimeter, and yep. these are like three, I think, That's or right. something. That's right. And that really, that makes a difference for speed lacing. Mm -hmm. Because on these, it's this size of a lace, the five millimeter, which is, a, I think, a standard, uh, probably AR670-1 says it's a standard. Probably. Uh, y y they tend to bunch, and the, the three millimeters do not. I also found that, you know, because I, my initial reaction was I, I, I'd grown used to the five millimeters. Yep. So I said, oh, they're, they're bigger, they're tougher or something. I mean, that, some of the original prototypes of the Mac B1 had the, the bigger they, laces. They did. Yeah. What I found is that when they get really dirty and muddy as well, mm -hmm. they don't, it doesn't come apart or doesn't wash off as easily. It comes, no. comes off yeah. of this, the, the three yeah. millimeters a lot better. They're faster yeah. to lace up. Yep. Just the, the three millimeters were... I was, I was surprised, I was yeah. glad that that worked I, I out. I was too, and I, I had no idea that something like that would make such a big difference. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So if you, go, if you go sort of, you know, where to start with these, um, obviously, you know, this being the, the, the Vietnam era jungle boot being the inspiration. One of the, one of the first things that we really wanted to do was to clean up this side profile. You can see on the, the Vietnam era ones, you've got this huge bunching of, of stitching mm -hmm. that's right there, and you know, it's just, it's, it kind of looks heavy. It just, it, 
Yeah. There's, you, can, you can feel, you know, there's just, it's, there's bulk there. Well, you've got multiple levels of, of leather and nylon all coming together yep. at the same point, and then you've got sewing going into that, and it just makes a great big I mean, these lump. are really, we'll call really it what broken, you call in, it, but, yeah. and, but, you know, I don't remember that being a catastrophic failure point, but it's right. for different strokes for different folks. Everyone's mm -hmm. foot's a little different. So cleaning yeah. up, yeah. cleaning up that area so that yeah. there wouldn't be the same degree of friction potential. Mm -hmm. And it just, it, it makes it look better as well. So what happens is the pattern ends up splitting down the back. And that's where on the, the interior, it was really important mm -hmm. to add that suede, yeah. that piece of suede, suede leather to, yeah. the, to, the, to the counter, to the, yeah, uh, to the heel, the heel counter, counter. Yeah. so that, you know, there would be no, no break in time. So that was one of the immediate shifts that, that we made. We honored the, the nylon around mm -hmm. the ankle, the extra rigidity for yeah. the ankle. Yep. Cause you know, the guys, extra support. Guys also have to be able to jump in these, yeah. you know, which means you have to land, yeah. which is yeah. a lot of, you, you need that little bit of extra angle stability. Yeah. Um, ar around the top, there's rolled over leather. It feels mm -hmm. almost like padding, which is, yeah. which is not the goal because then padding gets, it yeah. absorbs stuff, but it just doubled over leather, which is, you know, it does help on the, the comfort side. It, it makes at, it very comfortable. At, at the top yeah. where, you, where, where you lace them up. Um, so we talked about the, the speed laces, and we also spent a lot of time making sure that you could get into these boots, right? That was, yeah. that, the, the tongue construction was a big deal for us. Yeah. And so what it ended up being was we went with a wider toe opening, and you know, that, that comes with extra pattern pieces. You know, it's, it, or, or sorry, that it, it makes for a larger tongue pattern, mm -hmm. but you have, to, you have to bring that up within the, in the interior right. so that you can keep debris and, and right. all that kind of stuff out, out. as well. But yeah. ultimately, if you don't like getting into the boots, you're not gonna wanna wear them. Yeah, you're not gonna so, put them on. So it's just one That's of those simple. necessary things. Yeah. And you can see these, these old school ones. I mean, these are just enormous too. And yeah. they go all the way up to the top. And it's just, I mean, that's, uh, ours aren't quite like that. We dropped it a little bit mm -hmm. and still made it accessible yeah. to get into that it would, you know, not yeah. that it, you wouldn't hate getting into them. These, you know, these have different different construction. There's a two part tongue. We we went with a one part tongue for mm -hmm. for you know simplicity's sake. Right. Um, so the tongue was a, a really big deal for us toward the very end. You know, kept the kept the the toe cap and the heel cup for mm -hmm. for stability mm -hmm. in in both the front and stability right. protection for right. the toe. It's not steel though. You don't right. you don't need steel yeah. if. If that's your specific job in life, then there's some people out there that make great steel steel toed boots. Right. Go go get them. They're work boots. But so here here's people. what happens in the big army though is it's sort of these decisions by committee where everyone has a vote, right? And mm -hmm. you say, oh, they've got to be tough and durable, and you know all of these different things. And so yeah. eventually, it's it's everything gets added, mm -hmm. right? Well, if they're heavier, then they'll last longer. If you yeah. know, then they're more durable. Yeah. So yeah. keep putting all of this stuff, stuff into them. It. Eventually yeah. you've got this thing, it fulfills the requirement and you get the contract and nobody wants to wear them. Yeah. And so we, you know, being really just there the you know. three of us, yeah. you know, it was, what did these have to be? Remove everything, remove everything yeah. else and make sure that they're, that they're lightweight. So when you get to the weight, so often it's the soul that really makes the, mm -hmm. the difference. And so sure. what, you'll, what you'll see with a lot of these, even with these Oakleys, is just wrapping everything 360 in sort of yeah. this, this hardened rubber is, you know, it's a, it's a way to, to say and to tell people, oh, look, there's, there's more protection or whatever, right? They're right. tougher. Well, these are even tougher. They're, they, they weigh, you yeah. know, a, a, lot more, a lot more, the, the desert ones that I never wore. Yeah. Um, but ours, it was the, the compromise between how much durability do you need and want versus the, the weight, mm -hmm. right? Because you can't have both. Yeah. And we were committed to, to lightweight. So we spent a long time testing just the EVA, the EVA right. foam. It was the actual right. sole for a, a long period of time with the boots. And it's really lightweight. It and is. I mean, I, I rocked in the Grand Canyon with just those soles, mm -hmm. and the boots were really lightweight. I really enjoyed that aspect of it, but over, you know, however many hundreds of miles, maybe even more, because Columbia as well. So I put a, a lot, a lot, a lot of miles on right. them, and just over those hundreds of miles, realistically, you know, just saw a little bit too much of the sole was, was wearing, wearing away. Now, yeah. I didn't have any problem doing, you know, working out in them or 
rocking in them or, or training. Mm -hmm. It was just the soul. We wanted it to last a little bit longer. And so the EVA itself, this foam was, was made out of, you know, it's all EVAs are not the same. And there was a little bit of rubber in there. It made them more durable than your average EVA, mm -hmm. but we still wanted to add a little bit more traction and a little bit more durability. So we added this really thin strip of, of, you know, a rubber compound mm -hmm. to the bottom and raised it up just a little bit onto the, onto the toe, right? right? And so that's so, you know, you go and you're in the push-up position or you're on concrete or whatever, you know, and there's, yeah. there's a, lot of, a lot of us that live a lot of our lives on concrete yep. and you need it to, you need it to, to, to withstand that stuff. So, yeah. so, you know, you call these good for what? Assault in an airplane or something? Sure, they'd be great. <laughs> Right at the side, they're, they're, they're a great soul. It's, uh, they, they, do, they worked really hard to, to come up with this and to, to cut it down to the point, as you've said, that it doesn't add that much weight, but it does in fact give you an excellent traction capability. And we proved that in the mountains of, of North, Northern Vietnam uh, in all kinds of clay and, and, and dirt and mud, whatever, that it would it actually gave you traction, but at the same time, it vacated the, the mud and stuff that you, want, you were walking through. And so that made it really great. It just, it didn't accumulate yeah. it yeah. To, to begin yeah. with. Because that was the yeah. thing, there was, there was lots of different soles that guys would have. The, the ones with the, the, the real ridges, oh, yeah. you know? Those, yeah. I mean, you're, before you know it, you're walking around with five pounds of mud on Absolutely. the bottom of your, of your boot. And yeah. So we wanted something that would be a lot more streamlined than mm -hmm. that. And obviously we wore these yeah. all over Saigon, Hanoi, you know, you, all over Everywhere. Japan, yeah. Tokyo, right? Tokyo yeah. and then all the airports yeah. in between. And so, you know, I mean, when we say that you have to, you have to live in your boots in special forces, I mean, it's just a yeah. fact, right? Yeah. And you're, you're also carrying weight, you know, mm -hmm. rucking is the foundation of special forces training yeah. and carrying weight is one of those things that you're always going to do. That puts a little bit exactly. more weight onto your feet. Mm -hmm. So it, it's more paramount that you have something that that feels is good. stable, solid, and feels good, and, and yet is lightweight so that you're not carrying extra weight. I mean, these are, yeah. I mean, they feel like running shoes. If you they go, do. If you go run in them, yeah. they feel like running shoes, too. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so it's sort of, people say, well, I'm not a special forces guy. Why, why do I need this? It's sort of, hey, you know, you ever go travel? Nobody ever travels with nothing, yeah. right? You've got luggage, you've got stuff, you're moving, you're on your feet all the time. All the time. You yeah. want something that's going to be comfortable throughout that process. Yeah. So, that was, the, that was the thinking. And then the, with the, the insert, we spent another long while making yeah. sure that the inserts, uh, the workhorses, provided that, that sort of padded support stability that, yeah. you know, none of these boots come with anything worth a damn in no, terms of an these. insert. And, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a lost opportunity because everybody says... That's, 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 a, that's a, yeah. That's an insert. Flimsy but, garbage, right? Yeah. And so yep. the, the lost opportunity is because people will try to save, save a few bucks or more at the last instant and say, well, this doesn't matter. You're not going to buy it based on the insert because you won't notice how great the insert is until, you know, mile, yeah. till hour five you're on your feet, till mile 10, till, yeah. and yeah. then over the course of the lifetime of the boots, you'll, your, your feet will thank you. But it's just, yeah. it's not something that typically people say most people are going to make buying decisions off of, even though it's the right thing to do to add a better insert. So, and I think most people assume that, that when you get a boot, whatever boot it might be, that there has been thought given to the insert, serious thought, and that's a, a fallacy. Don't do it is. that. It is. Uh, so. As opposed to, to, the, to the Mac V1s and, and the, the boot guys that were actually uh, not me, not you, but the boot guys, uh, Paul in particular, that came out with the idea for using a good, a really good insert. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in, in the inserts are sort of what we thought about as like the, the shoulder straps on a GR1. Oh, yeah. right? I, mean, I remember yeah. spending so much time on those back in the day where, you know, what there's a, there's a denser foam and a less dense foam. One, mm -hmm. the, the less dense one still provides that degree of comfort Dumber. and the denser one provides that degree of comfort over the long haul. It keeps yeah. its, it keeps its stability sort yeah. of against your, your body with the weight that's, that's going into it. So, you know, taking all, taking all of those features, you've got a lightweight boot that's, that's for rucking that you can also travel, train, ruck, do, do whatever in, you know, find your favorite watering hole. Absolutely. And, you know, at, there, there's been no feature that we didn't spend a lot, a lot of time on. Yeah, you know? there was careful consideration given to each one. And, and as you mentioned earlier, 
all of the extraneous stuff that wasn't needed. Because there was, there was talk about a big wrap on the front and, and, and a wrap up the back or an angle up the back, and it wasn't needed. So don't do it. Keep it simple. There was a pair that they, it was one of the, the <laughs> I remember sending you a picture of it, and they did one of those wrap soles, yeah. rubber all yeah. over it, and I just hated it. Yeah, it was I just terrible. did not want it was to wear terrible. it. Yeah. I mean, it's a wrap sort of like what this is. Yeah. It just ends up being heavier. And so yeah. I remember when, when we had these, and I had, you know, uh, it was a different pair of Merrells, same, same exact problem, mm-hmm. it had spacer mash and stuff, yeah. and just absorbed lots of stuff, yeah. dirt and yeah. filth and stink. Um, but it has this, this big sole wrap on it. And by comparison to, to the big army boots, you're like, man, these are really like a sneaker. This is great. And now I feel the same way about these boots that I used to feel about those, those ones. It's like, comparing these them to are this. just yeah. big, bulky, too, they're too much. Yeah. And so, you know, when you streamline all of that, that's what, that's what you get with Mac V1. Yeah. Absolutely. This is, this is a, a streamlined as boot as you can get, and the break-in is no period at all, virtually. They do everything that they're supposed to do and nothing that they're not. Well, we were talking about that last night, Nancy and I, uh, and it's like, okay, you know, how, how did all this kind of happen? Because I, I go back and think about things like that every once in a while, and, and she'd been invited to an event in Charlotte and met a Team RWB guy, he was setting up the event down here. Garrett. He, yeah. yeah, Garrett, Garrett Cathcart. And he, and he said, you know, hey, you know, would you come down and talk? And she said, yeah. And at the time, my boyfriend uh, gives leadership talks. And maybe he could go too and give a, give a little leadership talk. Like, whatever. Like, okay. <laughs> so came down here October of 14, I think. That sounds right. Yeah. And... Came in to this this room right here. There was a whole bunch of people. They were sitting around and 14, kind of maybe in a, 15. Maybe 14. I don't know. 14 or 15, Nancy? Do you remember? Maybe it was 15. Yeah. Okay, 15. Yeah. And uh, I came in and, and I, I think some Garrett gave a little bit gave a bit of a talk and then then I got up and talked about leadership a little bit and, and then Nancy got up and I I got to meet Blaine there. I, I'd never met him before. I'd never met you before. Mm-hmm. And you have a funny way about you, and you mentioned it before, <laughs> that when you first meet people or, or when you're trying to figure them out, you're, you're, you're just kind of quiet. You, you, don't, you don't say a whole lot, and people kind of, kind of tend to put that in the, oh, he doesn't give a shit attitude. And it's like, oh, okay. Uh, and so it's like, gee, this guy's really quiet, but he's got a really great company here. I like what's going on. And then, we went out and did the light, mm-hmm. and, and we're wandering around, and you got talking about foot care, mm-hmm. and you were talking about wearing waterproof boots through, through selection. Waterproof socks. Water, waterproof yeah. socks. And I was like, oh yeah, okay. And I, 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 just, I was standing in the back, and I was just kind of shaking my head, and you were kind of looking at me like, oh, what, what's, what's up with this guy? <laughs> and afterwards, I mentioned that, that when I'd gone to a selection course in England, that I, was, I took a pair of waterproof socks, and I thought they were the hottest thing smoking, and everybody was talking about them. And luckily for me, the regimental sergeant major at that time said, lad, don't wear those. You will eat your feet up. We tried them, and they don't work. And he said, I'll have the quartermaster bring you a, some wool socks, and did. And so then that, that was kind of the first bonding mm-hmm. point for you and I. Uh, yeah, because I was leading the light, and it was sort of a, a, also teaching people about rucking. So I went yeah. to General Jackson's off Yatkin and yep. bought this, you know, probably forty dollar pair of waterproof socks. I think that's probably where I bought mine. I don't you know. know. Yeah. It, it was yeah. sort of, oh, this is going to be yeah. awesome. This is going to yeah. save my feet for this next yeah. one. And I didn't even wear. I wore nothing inside of the waterproof socks either. Uh, okay. So you know, it's like wrapping yeah. your feet in Saran wrap and then and, yeah. and putting them in the microwave. Yeah. And then figuring, I mean, bad then, things happen. And then put up with what happens. I, mean, oof, I just yeah. cringe thinking about that and. And so I was telling them, this is why you don't ever do that. You know, merino yeah. wool socks were just the way to go. That's the way to go. And you came over afterwards and we're moving to the next point. Yeah. You, you shared yeah. your, yeah, yeah I, was in, I was in Wales doing this and, and I got my pair of wool socks. I was glad I didn't. So <laughs> he's, you're sitting back there sort of chuckling at me, yeah. which was good fun. But I'm chuckling at myself too because I thought about the same thing. Luckily, I, somebody had intervened and, and said, don't do that. So yeah. I was like, <laughs> yeah. and, and so... And then, you know, you, we were here for 
that weekend. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. you and Nancy had been involved with Team RUB because we're both obviously passionate about the, the veteran space and veteran lives, and we believe in empowerment, not entitlement. And, I mean, I and think- service to the community and, and helping them, and they do a great job for that. Uh, and then, then the, the heavy occurred up in uh, uh, Bragg, mm-hmm. and I came to that, and, and uh, again, we kind of, we, we continued the bonding process at that point, and that's when you started talking about boots. That was the early, early stages of the boots. Because mm-hmm. one of the questions I asked you was, hey, you know, you guys make really great rucksacks, you make great apparel and stuff, uh, it lasts forever, it works great. What the hell, where's the boots? You because know? I'm looking at all these people that are attending the events, and certainly you can wear whatever you want to an event, but I'm, I'm looking at everything from, uh, not really, but flip-flops to, to, to Danner lineman boots for the telephone company. You know, who knows? There's just this wide variety, and I'm thinking, you know, you, you've so focused, and you, you have hit the mark on rucksacks and clothing. What about boots? And he's well, interesting you mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, so I, I put that in the back of my head. And, you know, I had met Paul, I don't know, a year earlier or mm-hmm. so, something like that. And yeah. Paul was wrapping up his time at Reebok and was sort of looking for other projects. Mm-hmm. And so that got put on the radar and it was sort of, hey, what are we going to build? How are we going to build it? Where are we going to build it? All that stuff. And it was still a, the exploration phase, but... I knew that what we wanted to go back to as the inspiration was the Vietnam era jungle boots. Mm-hmm. They're just, when, when you, you get with the guys within the community and you say, hey, remember what you wore in selection, right? It's yeah. always the, that. that. That's yeah. what you wore and that's, yeah. that, that was the best. And so, you know, we explored kind of trying to do this type of stuff in America. It just, it was not possible for us. Yeah. There was, I mean, there's some boot manufacturers out there that are building some parts of some boots here. It's usually the really expensive work boots. Mm-hmm. Once you get into performance stuff with the EVA foam and the injection molded injection molding and stuff like that, you're not really seeing that stuff right. go on here to, certainly not for right. a, a startup company to go to, to find a, a vendor or a manufacturer right. here. I mean, Danner, the story Danner is building their performance hiking boots in, in Vietnam as well, by the way. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of, if yeah. Danner can't do it, I mean, yeah. it's just Who one of those, can? Yeah, I mean, they have everything at their disposal to be able to do it, and they're not doing it. And so it's one of those those kind of hard decisions, because Made in USA, it's, you know, GR1's Made in USA, my shorts, your your pants are Made in in USA. It's one of those things that, it was a hard decision, but, you know, ultimately, we wanted to to partner with the best, and Paul had had some, a great contact at at HSV. I mean, they do four million pairs a month, and when you think of, you know, what a factory should look like, white and bright and clean, and, you know, just a non sweatshop. No. Because when they, when they told us the, the amount of people that work there every day, I was, and they said, that you, want to, you want a tour? It's like, sure. I want to see these poor little children out there just, just <laughs> losing their eyesight trying to build a damn pair of boots. And no, it's no. not that at all. Uh, great company, great partnership there. So ultimately, the, the commitment was to, to excellence and to quality, and this is, that just became the reality. And Paul and I had kind of worked through that on the back end when you said, hey, what are you doing about boots? And that was the thought, was that we were going to have to leverage his overseas contacts. So I remember we, we chatted about it a little bit and just kind of trying to, a story is always better than just a thing, right? And so, mm-hmm. hey, here's a story, you know, the, the Reebok pump guy worked with, you know, a, special forces guy, that's a cool story, I guess. But ultimately, the, the better story and the one that is just really why I, I've loved this project so much is because you got involved. And you know, we took, the, we took this boot, which was you know, the one that you wore mm. in Vietnam, yep. the, that Vietnam, right. and modernized it in a way that brought your story for me to life, right? Yeah. To sort of, I mean, to me, you're this sort of timeless, this time with like any any period in history, you're gonna do just fine. It's just one of those, just one of those those rare birds like that 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 you meet in life. And so the bonding that we got to do throughout that process of going over there, revisiting a lot of your story while going to the factory was was life changing for me. And it, it started after that weekend, the the Bragg Heavy weekend, which is in what February. Yeah. And then I sent you a note after that, right yeah. after that, and I said. And this was a kind of a 
hard thing to do. I, I sent an email. It's like, hey, would you be interested in going to Vietnam with us? And we're going to explore some footwear stuff and maybe visit some places that you went to yeah. back in the day. Yeah. And when I hit send on that, it's like, oof, was it nervous? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, and I, you know, I would still be, it's still kind of, you know, I, I don't know. I had to get over it because it was just something that, hey, would you... The worst thing that happens, I don't think you're going to hate me for asking yeah, that. It's yeah, just, no, nah, yeah. I don't want to go or yeah. I'm not ready or whatever. Yeah. Those are yeah. perfectly acceptable things. But turn that, your story and our story of going back and revisiting a lot of that with you mm -hmm. and poured that sort of heart, soul, expertise and friendship into what these, these boots became. Yeah, and, and it was good for me too because I'd, I'd heard a lot of guys... Uh, that I've known over the years that went back and they they enjoyed some of them enjoyed it some of them didn't uh, But we as people we tend to remember the good things that happened to us and not not remember the bad That's just a, a normal psychological function and When you sent that to me, I looked at it. and I thought hmm, and I talked to Nancy uh, and You know, I, I'm not sure I want to do this. Well, let me think about it a little bit and it, But it didn't take me too awful long. I don't no, think it didn't and I thought ah. Eh, what the hell? In for a penny, in for a pound. Let's give it a shot. And so I, I responded to the affirmative on that, and it turned out to be really great for me because it was a, it was a closing of a circle of my life. It, it kind of brought things around. And it was great to go back to Vietnam in the sense that, and I, and I told this to some of the folks that we met there, regardless of who won the war, regardless of what government is in power, it's the people, it's all about the people. And that's true everywhere around the world, every country I've ever been in, to include America. It's about the people. The people make the country, and they've made that country. They've, they've taken it way beyond where it was before. The, the entrepreneurial spirit that they have, uh, they're, they're fantastic. So it was great to see that. It was, it was kind of life affirming. And the, the first night we were there, well, we, the, the day after the first night. <laughs> The, the first night. The first night, we were all so, so wired, I think, that, that we hit the 7-Eleven next door or whatever the name of the place was and, and bought some Tiger beer and just set out and waited till the, the rooster. No, no, we went downtown first, remember? Well, that's right. We were in the, it was that's the right. that we, hotel. We were hungry. Yeah. Yeah, and we went downtown, got some food. Everybody's partying down there. Uh, most of us did pretty well with dinner that night. Others didn't do quite so well, but it was, it was an interesting escapade. And then went back, got the beer, sat outside in their little courtyard, drank the beer, and just reminisced about everything in the world. Yeah. We talked about everything until the rooster started crowing, and then we decided to go see the War Museum. <laughs> yeah. So we go downtown to see the, their version of the War Museum, which, uh, understandably, you know, if, if you're the victor, you get a right to history books, and that's fine. Uh, but partway through, I was, I was just kind of really tired. It was starting to hit me. So I sat down on a bench, and a guy named BD sat down next to me, and I saw a picture of it yesterday on your computer. Mm -hmm. And he was from Singapore. And I didn't think much about it. He said, you're American. I said, yeah, I am. He said, were you here during the war? And I said, yeah, I, I did two tours. And he said, well, I'd like to thank you very much. Now, here's a guy from Singapore that I've never met in my life thanking me and I said, why, why are you thanking me? And he said, it's really simple. He said, we in Singapore, even though you may not have won here per se, you stopped the encroachment of communism, if you will, Chinese communism at that time, from moving through the entire peninsula, through all of those countries. And he said, I'd just like to thank you for that. And that was, that was a pretty cool thing. I mean, that, that was really affirming to me. And then to see some of the other places I'd been and, and, and all that. Again, traveling with a good group of friends, you, Andy, Paul, Sheldon, our driver, wonderful guy. Uh, we all became very, very protective of Sheldon <laughs> in our way. <laughs> Even though we got a little frustrated with him at times and, and, and you got a little more frustrated than most, I think. <laughs> He had, he had a little trouble finding his way, but he, he, he eventually got us there. And it was just, it was a, a, a truly a, a closing of the circle, a, a reaffirming for me that, that that part of my life hadn't been wasted. And that was pretty damn cool. 
Yeah, so there's obviously a lot of story to that that yeah. you know it's yeah. it's released in a lot of, there's a lot of little ep- episodes of our our travels through yeah. you know the rental car and then up yeah. north and Hanoi and Sapa and yeah. you know drinking those beers in China. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I swear we drank beer in China. Yeah, yeah, you, know, <laughs> you know it was it was a good trip. It ended up being you know a lot more meaningful to me than just flying over to flying over to find a factory. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's what was cool was. Taking, you know, the the legacy of our community mm-hmm. and, and the people, because it is always yeah. about the people it's about and everything, the, people. the country, Absolutely. the regiment, the, yeah. and taking all of that with what that's done for for footwear, and you know, going back to the the originals, the the Vietnam era jungle boots, and then taking those back through your yeah. story to Vietnam and yeah. retracing a lot of your your boot steps, very yeah. literally, yeah. and and so it just, I mean. There's just a lot of story that these represent to me because of because of this guy right here. So it, well, was, it was a great journey. It, it's a story from everybody, and it's a, everybody had a piece of this action, and that's what's so great about it. That's what's great about special forces, and always has been. It's not about any one individual. It's about teams, mm-hmm. building teams that everybody comes together to do their part to make a, a finished process or or to reach a goal, and there's the goal right there. Reached. With a great story in between yep. to, uh, to, to match up. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, there was just so much. I mean, you always want to get excellence, right? There's mm-hmm. always that pursuit. But when you have all of these other reasons that it just, you, you have to get excellence. I mean, there's yeah. so much tied in with your story. The, the guys are going to be, you know. I mean, the, the Special Force community is a judgmental group. Oh, absolutely. You know? And so, you know, they, yeah. get to, they get to be judge and jury now. Sure. Put them on their feet yeah. and go do their I stuff. Mean, you, and you can hear everything we say doesn't mean anything. Let me try a pair of those boots and see what they're like. Yeah. See if they're as good as these yahoos say they are. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So and that's all okay. that got poured that's into good. this in the couple trips and in all the back and forth that, you know, the prototypes mm-hmm. in, in the interim, the... The, the travel we've taken yeah. with them on, making yeah. sure they're good. They're all back. Over, all over the place. So, yeah. you know, it, it was a great story. And, and uh, my, only, my only hope is that we find another way to uh, Ab- keep, keep having more stories like that. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, cool stuff. All right. 